Hey guys, <clears throat> just uh, okay, we're playing against the uh, HRE. Guess the game remembers how badly I got stomped by HRE. Um, we're just gonna do kind of some build order vids. Um, uh, I had a suggestion of just doing some build orders, and I think that's a good idea because um, going back and looking at, I might actually do a breakdown of some of the, my losses actually. Um, when you go back and you look at um, the losses, there's a lot of there's a lot of room for improvement. So there's a lot of mistakes <clears throat> that I was making. But um, today we're gonna go and we're gonna look at the trade boom uh, build order. Um, this is on the fly, um, so there are some variations that can definitely be made. But we'll try to uh, get this. Uh, so first, first you definitely want to drop your TC uh, quickly. Pick up your sheep. Uh, go over here, get this. And okay, and then over to gold. So you're still doing your kind of your standard um fast H2 play. Um, we're playing on what map is this? Lipany. So I put on Lipany because it's not the best of trading maps. Like sometimes it has really good trade and other times it doesn't. So we're gonna see what we get this time. Um, still my next to four. So we have a, a decent haul here at the beginning, um, definitely favorable. The gold is not um, the best gold spawn for us, but this is really nice that we um, that we have our spawn set up like this. Um, for trading purposes, this is pretty nice to have our safe kind of back um, um, silver tree, as well as um, it's favorable for... Um, you know, protecting our silver tree right here. You know, it's a back trade line, and it's also um, it's a safe trade line for us as well, for the most part. So um, we do seven on the food. Your first, your first um, villagers. You split one to Ubu, split one to Gold. From no, the one from Ubu. He builds the Ubu, and then he'll go on to Gold. And then all your other villagers are on food, and you rally up to um, seven villagers on food. And after you get seven villagers on food, um, we go for one more on the gold, then you'll get two on gold, and then you rally up to nine or ten villagers on food. And then from there, you're transitioning to... Um, villagers, all villagers on the wood, and then you're gonna get villagers on the wood till you get about seven villagers. Um, it's important that you also have um, some hockey separation here for your your quick build up. We'll put it on the back side here, and. Make sure you don't do that where you uh, idle your TC. We'll send our con over here, then we'll scout the other side. Control group our um, silver tree. And then um, we're going to take two villagers. They're going to build this... Um, Stables and um, or um, an archery range. So depending on your opponent and kind of how they're pressuring you, um, what matchup it is, what map it is, etc. Um, you can also, I mean, you don't have to follow my playstyle and build barracks. You can build, uh, yeah, you can build barracks. Um, I find that horsemen are probably the best early unit that you can get for protecting your trade line. Manga die aren't bad at, as well. Um, especially if you're playing against like say an Ottoman opponent. Getting those early manga die is huge because you're gonna be stopping this um the the um, the incoming um spearman aggression which is hundred percent gonna be coming in. So no no doubt about it. 
So it's definitely not a bad move to do that. So we'll get seven on onto wood, and then we're going to be transitioning our villagers. We're going to drop our scout onto this TC. Um, let's going to finish scouting just around this base, kind of like what we would in real game. And then before we build our traders, we're going to build a stable, and then we're going to build double traders here. So the key to this build, um, we've got seven on wood. So after they finish building here, one is going to go, you can go seven or eight on wood. Sometimes eight is nice. Sometimes seven. But the thing is uh, getting those double production traders out. And one thing that I noticed, like um, for example, in my last game um, that I uploaded against HRE, a big thing is I had my, my production out early um, in time. But you know where where a big mistake was uh, is I didn't continue producing enough pr more production, and um, I also um, I didn't go aggressive with the units that I made. So that is another thing you definitely want to be um, actually pressing your opponent with the units that you make, um, and you don't want to. Um, overstay um, in in feudal part of the big reason we're trade booming is because um, we're trying to get up to the next age here so and now that we've got a horseman over here so we get him off of his goal and see this is something I didn't do um, in the previous game if I had sent early horsemen over immediately there was a chance that I was um, pushing him off of his um, off of his resources, off his wood line. It could have been um, changing the tempo a lot. We could have made him have to fight our army there first before having to rotate back. So very, you know, small little details, but really important details. Um, definitely something not to forget. So this is basically the opening that you guys can do. The double trader opening is it what I like to do. And it's good. You know, we're not bringing a ton of gold in right now. We're only bringing 37 per trip. But again, um, the return of investment is 100% worth it right now. Um, and um, you're, you're going to be chewing up your units, you uh, chewing up resources here. So make sure, you know, um, not to use up too much wood here early. And eventually you're going to have to rotate more villages. You can either rotate more villages onto wood or more villagers onto um, um, like if you're getting like hard focus let's say or like you see he's building more uh, infrastructure much infrastructure for example the last game the game that we played against that uh, HRE player he uh, he had built a bunch of um, two stables and um, He had built two stables and he had built um, um, or one stable, two barracks. So if you see that, building additional infrastructure here is is, is fine, is worth it. You don't have to just fully commit into just only only traders here. Um, building more units is never, never a bad thing at all. So the big thing is just getting map control with your horsemen. If you build Mangada, that's fine as well. Um, I like him too. To do, I like to do that as well, but it's definitely it, it can be a double-edged sword because um, they are as more they are an expensive unit and they're slow in production is the big thing. But you see here at eight minutes, building only horsemen, we've got more than enough um, gold for an age up. So you know if you're not if you're not actually building you know if you're not building these horsemen if you're not building military, um, you can be aged up being aging up at the seven at the eight minute mark, if not before. So that's um that's definitely a big thing is just see what you can get scouts getting your con on your enemy getting eyes on your enemy and making sure that you can um can afford to to age up properly or you know you can be greedy in trade room um just a just a little thing here on the men at arms versus horsemen horsemen do do okay against men at arms they're not great they get I mean in mat equal numbers they lose but I see. Two on one, three on one, you can you can win those fights. So um, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, 
even though you know we're not we're not trading a huge amount right now we're not trading huge huge amounts right now it's just a half map trade we're getting 40 gold on the return here um it's it's still it's still good income you can still castle up by eight minute marks and look it for not building any troops here for you know a minute um you know we can age up here as well so um it's all about just really controlling um your macro properly and not getting um sucked into staying into feudal uh, making sure you age up and um if you do age up here if the map is kind of a rough map to, to get gold sometimes it's worth getting um step readout um but uh typically if you're going trade you want to be going curl tie and kind of forcing the fight on their base the big thing is with these early horsemen or the early units that you make is keeping really good vision on your opponent and keeping the aggression on their side and forcing um forcing them to fight on their side of the map so Sitting back too much is never a good idea. Building some ranges, building enough eco to, to keep yourself in a good spot is a, is a big part of it. So um, I hope it's uh, this helps you guys out a little bit. Um, there's a lot of variations you can do with this build um, in terms of your wood line here and your, uh, your villagers. Um, you can commit um, instead of seven villagers early on, on seven, uh, seven on one, you can commit eight, nine, ten and produce like three or four military production buildings while you're constantly trading up um so uh yeah that's uh that's also another thing to keep to keep in mind um these these traders you're building you can build four per like to keep constant um silver tree production um without a break you're talking it says 16 seconds but we'll, we'll just say 15 seconds um just to make our, our lives easier in terms of math but we're talking 240 wood um per minute and um each villager you're gathering around 40 wood a minute so you need six villagers on wood to constantly be um at least six villagers to be able to keep constant silver tree production so that's why we usually do seven or eight is to have a little bit of extra wood after a couple minutes to drop um uh, an infrastructure building so sometimes you know people will mass up to 10 villagers early and that way you can produce these early infrastructure buildings right after you drop your silver tree and you can drop um you know you can drop a a a uh a range you can drop a barrack um if you Whatever your opponent has, you want to be matching that at least. Um, my game against the HRE, he had two um, barracks and he had one stable. And I had one stable and one archery range. And on top of it, he's making units that are produced faster um, with the men at arms. And he's got more production buildings. Um, even though it's a long walking distance, he's got a lot more production produ power um, because my mangot are being produced every 30 seconds. Um, if you build ranges, don't be afraid to um, drop um archers as well archer mass and horsemen is a great combo uh, for mongols and it's a really strong play you don't have to go all calves like i do um it does help with your presence on the map but that's but that's about it so um i hope you guys liked it um i hope you get something from it there's a lot of there's a lot of potential in the trade um play you know i'm going safe early trade like even just this half map trade is a lot easier to defend early and it still has a, a really good um, boom potential um, and you can always later on once you acquire more map control pick up your silver tree re-establish your trade line a little bit further so there's a lot of potential in the in the short trade uh, early on so um thanks for watching guys um if you have any comments or questions or uh, if you want a little bit more further detail um about the trade build um just let me know and i'll be happy to respond in the comments um Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.